Hello? Is this Percy Pringle the third? Uh, I hope it is. Who's this? This is the Honky Tonk Man, the greatest intercontinental champion of all time. And we got Percy Oh, well, hello, Wayne. How the hell are you? Well, I, I'm not, I'm, I'll tell you what, after that three days over to Cauliflower Alley, uh, and I went ten rounds with old Jose Cuervo, and he knocked me down really bad. Oh, my God. I'm glad I don't read that no more. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> when did you stop? Uh, about 3 o'clock this afternoon? Uh, no, it's been a while. I don't remember the last time. It's been a while. I ain't yeah, going to say well, I'll never do it again. I ain't going to say I'll never do it again, but uh, not recently. Well, good for you. Good for you. I wish I had that kind of a, a desire and determination and a strong will that you have. And How you been, my man? Oh, we've been doing pretty good. Doing pretty well, good. Well, good. How was now? You have to tell us uh, because you were back at the WrestleMania for that big weekend of festivities, and uh, how was that? Oh, it was wonderful. They, wonderful, they, they wonderful, always, wonderful. Yeah, and you got to visit. Uh, you told me uh, you visited with my dear friend Jimmy Hart, and uh, yes, I did. That's the first time I've uh, me and Jimmy's got to spend any time together, and God knows when. I can't. Years. It's been years. It was so good seeing him. Yeah, I, I I haven't seen Jimmy up close and personal now in gosh uh, over a year I guess and the, that when I saw him back September of last year was the first time I'd seen him in about ten or twelve years yeah yeah that's that's how it'd been for me I, at, at least eight or ten years and uh, yeah it, it it was really good uh, to spend some time with him it really was it was it was like when I saw you about two years ago it was the first time I'd seen you in about fifteen years. Yeah, and we never change, do we? No, I, we don't. You, I mean, <laughs> you know, I'm so I'm so proud. Uh, I had to do my hair the other day, and my wife went to the beauty s- s- uh, supply place and bought this stuff. And for some reason, it makes my one of my 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 right ear it itches inside really bad for about three days. And I remember, and and I I told my friend Steve Wilton here, who moderates the show for us, that. Percy Pringle, the pallbearer, told me to use the the uh, Clairol beard and mustache on my hair, and I never have a problem with that. But then when I deviate yep. from the plan, when I deviate from the plan, I have trouble. <laughs> yeah. But the, you know, I tell people they they say, "Gosh, you you still look the same." I said, "Clairol does wonders." Yes, it does. God bless and, you, buddy uh, Clairol. So what do you, you know, we want, I want to talk a little bit because the fans may not realize this. We, you and I had missed each other for over 20 years in, in, in our careers because we never crossed paths until you came to WWE and came in with The Undertaker. Yep. Yeah, it was, I was thinking about that too. In fact, I, I remember the first time that we that we met each other. I don't know if you do. Uh, we were staying. We were in Chicago at, at the Rosemont Horizon, and uh, we were staying at that hotel right there. In the, you know, kind of more or less in the parking lot of the, of the Rosemont there. Yep. And uh, I stopped. I stopped by the bar, and who's sitting there at the bar but the world famous honky tonk man? <laughs> and, and, uh, and I had never met you before up to that time. And I, and I walked in and sat down next to you, and introduced myself to you, and bought you a cocktail, and. Uh, and ever since then, I've considered myself to be good friends. <laughs> yes, we, 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 <laughs> yes, we are absolutely good friends, and I, I'm so glad you were able to clear your schedule for a few minutes to come on tonight and be with us and uh, tell the fans what you're up to right now. Oh, still, still playing wrestling. I've been, I've been staying really, I've been staying pretty busy, yeah, pretty much every weekend. You know, uh, like you said, I, I, I done the. Uh, the, the the WWE Fan Fest there for uh, for four days and they kept my butt run hopping there. I'd done like a morning session and an afternoon session uh, every day at the uh, at the fan access that they have, and uh, which I had a really good time. And and they had this uh, for those of the fans that haven't uh, have haven't been there before. They they have first of all the building is huge where they have this access at. You know they. They bring it. They store. They store all this memorabilia all year round, you know, and in, in, in storage. 
and you can see about you know everything from Andre the Giant's boots to to uh, you know Vince's uh, I don't know what that damn car was that they blew up and said he got killed in. <laughs> if you remember okay. that angle, but yeah, uh, everything, yeah. Er, everything. You, you've been there before uh, to the fan access. I'm, I'm sure you have. But they have uh, one one section of the room is is, uh, is curtained off in black all the way from the floor to the ceiling, and I'm talking about a huge. I'm not good at measurements, but a huge section of the room, and they call it the Undertaker's graveyard, and they have a, uh, a virtually a tombstone for every opponent that the Undertaker's ever had from our first WrestleMania. Me and the Undertaker had our first WrestleMania together at the same time. Uh, and in and, uh, and Los Angeles, which was WrestleMania 7 in 1991, where uh, he went against Jimmy Snuka. And he had, they have a tombstone for every one of his opponents from then, up then, up until uh, the current one. And uh, they had the, when I used to do my my old funeral parlor, I don't know if you remember, you guys, you guys remember that. Yes, uh, we remember the funeral parlor. That, that, Welcome to my parlor. You remember, you remember that fun stuff, <laughs> which was it was it, which was a lot of fun. That was uh, amazing. And I had a blast doing that, and it was totally unscripted too. You remember those days when things were unscripted? Oh, and, of course, uh, that's the only way you and I can do it. And it was so much fun, you know. And it, it's not as much fun anymore when they hand you a piece of paper and want you to memorize something. But back in the <laughs> days when we just, you know. Hell, me and you were broken in the business that way. We never were given scripts to study or uh, of course, that. of course. And, we might uh, we might that, have a bullet point or, or something like that, but and and I had the honor of, of having all these guests on my funeral parlor. You know, one of the the highlights of my career was was the one that I had with Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair. I'll never forget that as long as I live. I was standing on I went back to the subject of the fan access at WrestleMania. They had the original set from my funeral parlor that I'd done, my God, 20 years ago. Wow. And, and I remember standing on that set uh, with Ric Flair on one side of me and, and Hulk Hogan on the other side of me with, with me and my microphone, and I'll never forget it, Honky Tonk. I, I, it went through my mind. I go, where in the hell can I go from here? I'm, I'm, I'm at the well, top of the mountain with Ric Flair. At that time, you know, this was 1991. I'm standing right. between, between Ric Flair and 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 and, and uh, Hulk Hogan, and and I'm thinking to myself, where can I go from here? And uh, well, it was just you, you, uh, it was just a moment in time that I, that I, that I'll that I'll never forget, because at that time Ric Flair and and, and, and Hulk Hogan they were the man. And well, anyway, anyway a- that fan, if I had a blast at that fan access, I really did get to meet fans from all over the world. And 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 I and just like you, and, and we're a lot alike in, in, in very similar ways, uh, that we really treasure our fans and our supporters, and that you know that that we uh, do what we can because my God, if it wasn't for them, there wouldn't be no us, right? Of course, and that that's the way I feel, and and uh, that uh, that's the bond that you and I have uh, by being friends. That we we understand that. Without these fans and without the people who who are listening to us tonight, uh, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be talking about ourselves and and telling people where we're going to be and what we're doing. And but uh, yes, to stand on the podium with a Hogan and and a Flair and uh, you know, and for me to have yeah. done the things I, I done the things I've accomplished, you've took it to a, a, a much higher level by being with one of the greatest superstars of all time, The Undertaker. I've just uh, I, I've just been very very blessed, and Jimmy Hart was very very special early on in my career too, and that's why I said I had such a good time spending time with him, is because my you know we all remember our first appearance in Madison Square Book Gardens, you know I know you do I know I do, especially as country boys from Alabama and Tennessee, and you know we remember things like that. Because that's what all, all, you know, everybody wants to make it to the Garden. And, I, and I'll never forget my first appearance at the Garden. First time ever in New York City. I was like the Beverly Hillbillies going to Beverly Hills, you know, uh, getting <laughs> off the plane at LaGuardia. But uh, I, I ran into Jimmy Hart, and, and he kind of took me under my, his wing. And he took me all over New York City. He took me to Empire State <laughs> Building. He took me to the Hard Rock. 
he took me to, he was doing a lot of music, and well, he still does, but he was really more involved in music back in those days. He took me to his producer there in the downtown middle of New York City. Jimmy introduced me to him, and and uh, I'll, I'll never forget Jimmy Hart for a lot of things that he'd done for me early on because he had been there for so long, and I was the new, new kid on the block. And uh, unlike a lot of guys today that, you know, some guys today, they don't want the new kids on the block to make it. You know, they'll do everything they can to keep them from making it. But Jimmy wasn't that way. Bobby Heenan wasn't that way either, you know. These guys really are very, very special to me that I, that I love dearly, that if it wasn't for them, plus the fans and a lot of other guys that I've had the opportunity to be with through the years, you know, I, I never, never could achieve what I've done, and I'll never forget it. Well, can, are, can you stay with us about five or ten more minutes, and we'll take a break I and can come do- back? Absolutely, I'm, I'm with you. I've, I've set aside this evening for a honky tonk man, so I belong <laughs> to you tonight. Okay, we'll be we'll take a quick break. Be back in a couple minutes. Okay, guys, yeah, we'll be back in a few moments. And if you want to ask a question to uh, Paul Barra, our special guest for the evening, uh, you can ask us in our chat room or call us on eight zero five seven two seven seven one one three. We'll be back in a few moments. My God, that guy's sharing from Alabama, Tennessee. I would call the crib same number, same hood. It's all good. Uh, if you don't know, now you know. You had to go, but nothing to me. If you're the only one, I'll give you good and today. Welcome, Welcome back, back to Shake, Rattle, and Roll with Steve Wilton and the Honky Tonk Man. Call us live on 805-727-7113. 805-727-7113. Welcome back, fans. We're live on Shake, Rattle, and Roll with uh, Percy Pringle the Third, a.k.a. Paul Barra and the Honky Tonk Man. And uh, Percy, yeah, I'm I'm English, so I'm all the way from the UK. Uh, are you, are you you're from Mississippi then, huh? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, Percy, his ebonics is uh, they're a little bit different than ours, mine and yours. <laughs> well, I, I I know you've traveled a lot over in Europe and the UK, and and, and I have too. And and I just love it. if there's anything I really miss about you know WWE, I I thoroughly enjoy traveling overseas, and we've done a lot of it back in the day. And I just think the world of of, of uh, London and the UK. I love your country over there. And the fans you know, love you too. They're absolutely crazy. We I hear there's a big wedding coming up over there. Is that true? Uh, I've heard something about that. Yeah, it's uh, it's all over oh. the news. <laughs> Hope he's getting married again over there to a queen. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll tell you what. I've been on a few honeymoons. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yes, you know. Uh, uh, Percy, you mentioned uh, our travels, and I find that the Canadian fans and the European fans and the Australians and, and Japanese and wherever we go overseas, they're, they're so much not as critical as, our, and, you know, and I love our, our United States fans, but our U.S. fans are, t- tend to be a little bit more critical of our work product than the fans. Oh, absolutely. The, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree. I, I, I find that, too, and... and and, and me and you being such old, old school as we are, you know, I have a hard time sometimes when I have a fan to come. And I, and I enjoy talking to fans, but they want to come up and talk about, you know, work rate and and, and who should be booked with who and and just like, you know, an, an armchair booker. You know, well, they should do it this way, they should do it that way, they should do it this way. You know, please, you know, go, oh, my God, I ain't taking up for nobody, but if you ain't walked in those shoes, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Exactly, and and that makes me you 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 segued me to a, a good segment I want to get into with you because I think the fans really need to know and and and, and I mentioned this at Cauliflower Alley uh, when they were going to induct me the other day for the award that I had a career long before I was a honky tonk man. You had a career long before you were Paul Bear. So tell yes, the fans, sir, 50, tell the fans yeah. about your. Yeah, 15, oh, I was in the business 15 years before I became Paul Bearer. Uh, I, I'm, I'm from good old Mobile, Alabama, right here on, on the beautiful Gulf of Mexico, where you've worked many, 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 many times, and still do every once in a while come to the area. Uh, so I was raised back in the territory days, you know, uh, of Gulf Coast wrestling. 
and, and the Gulf Coast Wrestling uh, pretty much compromised uh, the state of Alabama, like from from Montgomery South, uh, and then the Panhandle of Florida, from like Hattiesburg, Mississippi South to the Gulf Coast, and uh, we were on own little company there, and. And, and I'm talking about, I graduated high school in 1972. Uh, you know, I don't mind dating myself at all. I'm proud how old I am. And uh, so it was so much more different then. We, we didn't have cable TV. Uh, we didn't have, you know, the Internet. And, and I would run down to the, to, the mag- to the newsstands once a month and get my magazines, you know, to see what in the world was going on in, in the rest of the world. I was one of the fans that did know, you know, what, that there was a Cow Palace in San Francisco and, and, and a Madison Square Gardens and, and a Chicago, and and uh, I, I kept up with all that. But the average fan didn't know. You know, uh, your world was where you lived. They didn't, they didn't realize there was wrestling, you know, in other parts of the, of the country. Uh, but uh, but I, I I grew up on a on a very 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 firm foundation of some fantastic talent uh, that came out from the Gulf Coast and as as a matter of fact I hate to be a name dropper or anything but uh, I'm sure a lot of folks are familiar with with Michael Hayes the Freebird Michael Hayes who is the vice president of, of the creative team right now for WWE uh, I consider him to be one of my brothers we 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 were fans together. He lived in Pensacola, and I lived in Mobile. We grew up on the same wrestling, uh, the same, you know, Cowboy Bob Kelly and Ken Lucas and, and and Dick Dunn, and I can go on and on and on with names, a lot of names that a lot of you fans probably don't even recognize. I know Honky knows who they are, but uh, just tremendous, tremendous talents uh, uh, back, back in the day that, uh, that I was privileged to sit under the learning tree and, and I just soaked it up like a sponge. Uh, there was a gentleman by the name of uh, Frankie Kane, the great Mephisto. Uh, the great Mephisto, what a mind he was in, in our industry. Uh, he wrestled for a few years under a hood uh, as one of the Infernos, J.C. Dykes and the Infernos. Well, long story short, uh, there was a little territory over in over Mississippi. Uh, Frankie Kane w- was the booker then. And me and Michael Hayes and Terry Gordy and Kamala uh, and uh, Rip Rogers, we were we were all uh, just young kids. Uh, Frankie Kane gave me the name of Percy Pringle in 1978, and and me and Terry Gordy and Michael Hayes and and, and Kamala, we all started together uh, back in those days. So we were able to learn under some really really fantastic minds and. And learn to respect this industry, and that's something that I've never, very, never lost today, that I'm very proud of. Yes, and uh, you know that Frankie Kane uh, booked me, and Terry Gordy was like 17 years old, just before before you guys came in there, and Jake Roberts' dad was there, uh, Grizzly Smith. Uh, and- yep, yep. He was, in fact, Grizz was still there. Was there when I when I came in? He was still there. Yeah, and that was the, the ex, that was the first territory that I had ever worked uh, before I went to uh, to Jerry Jarrett, and of course we're gonna have Jerry on next week, uh, uh, Percy. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I, th- yes. I think the, I think the world of Jerry. We stay in touch, you know, via email now and then. And uh, God, I, it was it was just it's hard, and, and when you understand completely what I'm talking about, it's hard to explain some of these things, you know. Unless you, and, and a lot of fans say, oh well, well, you know, the, the, all the old timers say that. If you weren't there, if you didn't experience, if you didn't know what you know, kayfabe meant, if you didn't understand what traveling in separate cars were, or dressing in separate dressing rooms, and and never talking to your opponent, and if you didn't, you know, they. Just, it, but it was such a different world, and and. and I, I don't. You understand what I'm saying, and I'm, I'm having trouble putting it, 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 putting it into, into it's words. Totally, totally, but it, totally different. The, the young fellows today and the young ladies out there, uh, it, it's it's a totally different dream they're chasing, not the dream we chased. And right. and I bought the magazine. I bought the magazines too because I wanted to go to all these places. Me too. Exactly. And and just on on the side, I, I am, I'm bad about going off on tangents when I do interviews like this, and I don't do I, a lot I, of interviews I, like this. Don't worry, I do too. <laughs> and, and I and I appreciate and I, I certainly appreciate you having me on. Uh, I I just finished up a six month run uh, up there with Vince, and 
and what it's just a totally different world that I started in on December the 22nd, 1990. And, you know, and, we, and me and Taker had our first WrestleMania together, and that was WrestleMania 7. This one that I just finished up was WrestleMania 27, just to put things in perspective. And, and and back before, a lot of people wonder why I disappeared there for a while. And, and let me just jump in here and say that, that I lost my wife to breast cancer uh, uh, two years ago. We were married 30 years. And if anybody knows, Wayne knows what how important a, a lady is, you know, a special lady to have at home waiting for you when you're you're on the road and making these long trips and stay home and take care of your kids and your home and, and they're there when you get home. How important it is. And we were married 30 years in this business. There's not a lot of guys that can say and, and be proud of the fact that they've been married 30 years. There's a lot of guys that are proud that they've had 30 wives. But uh, I've been married. We were married 30 years. But uh, she was my rock, and she was always there for me from the very first time. I, I you know, I, I, well, I was climbing the ladder until and, and I made it to the top. But uh, she had a real difficult time. Uh, uh, her and, and Jeff Jarrett's wife, Jill, uh, and, and I, I know you know Jeff and Jill Jarrett well, and, and uh, her, my wife and Jill Jarrett were diagnosed with breast cancer at the, about the same time, within about a month of each other. And what a horrible, horrible battle that they had. And, and my wife uh, kicked it the first time, and, and then she got it back again and, and kicked it again. And then it came back and just uh, totally, you know, t- took her from me. So uh, well, you- it was kind of a, it was kind of a, a rough uh, ho- a rough uh, road to hoe there, but what, I, what, what my point is, and, and I want to take this opportunity because I know there's a lot of fans listening out there and ladies too, and, and, I, and I like to do this when I do these interviews when I, when I know there's a lot of people out there listening. My God, go have your mammograms that you're supposed to have. You know, do what you're supposed to do. You know, it, 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 it's just so easy, and don't let this damn beast called cancer creep up on you. And, and take the love of your life away from you. And if your old lady, if your wife, I say old lady, if your wife don't want to do it, if your girlfriend don't want to do it, put her ass in a car and take her to the damn doctor. Because there ain't, man, I've been through a lot of my life, but my Lord, when she, when the God decided to call my wife home, uh, bless her heart, I know she's an angel, she's not hurting anymore, but these last two years have been j- j- just really brutal. brutal. But I'm very, very blessed. I have two wonderful sons. They have two wonderful wives, and I have two beautiful granddaughters. And, and in about 19 days, I'm going to have granddaughter number three. So I've, I've been very, very blessed to uh, to have a, a wonderful career, to to live my childhood dreams, and have a wonderful family. My parent and my I'm I just turned 57 about two weeks ago, and at 57 I still have both my parents, and. Uh, and I'm still playing wrestling when I want to, you know. But now I can kind of, like yeah, like you, I can pick and choose what I want to do and what I don't want to do. So I'll go out two or three times a month and, and, and have a good time. And, and you're like me, Wayne. If it's, not fun, if it's not fun, I don't care how much the money is. If it's not fun, I don't want to do it no more. I, I'll stay but home. When it, when yeah, I'd rather, I, yeah, exactly. I'd rather stay home. I know you'd like rather be on the golf course. And, and, and I'd rather be here, be here, here t- around the house. But if I know if if I know it's not going to be fun, I don't want to be a part of it. At this stage of my well, life, it's all about having fun, enjoying the industry that we've dedicated our our entire adult life to, and and just uh, continuing to see the world and and, and see our fans and uh, have fun. My God, that's what that's what pisses me off about a lot of the fans that they don't have fun. They spend, they work their ass off to make money and buy a ticket and go to wrestling, and they're gonna sit on the front row and critique every spot, everything that goes on in that damn ring. My God, suspend your damn belief for a little while, buy your box of popcorn, and sit there and enjoy some fine, fun entertainment. Jay, you know where I'm coming from. Yeah, that's that's the way I feel too. And and uh, you know, you're out here now. You're taking some independent bookings and. Tell the fans how and the promoters. There's a, there's a ton of independent promoters. The other night at the Cosplay Alley, part of my speech, I had the independent promoters stand up because without those guys, and 
that promote and, and run shows around North America, there'd be no place for guys like you and I. There'd be no place for young, upcoming talent to showcase himself. And I told him, when, that, that, when I walk in the locker room now, it's like a fountain of youth for me. But tell the fans uh, and the independent promoters how they can get in touch with Percy Pringle the third and, and get him booked on some shows. Well, I got a, I got a, I'm, I got a, a great, you know. Of course, I'm prejudiced, but I, my website isn't nearly as as good as yours. You have a wonderful website that I've been following for a lot of years, but I do have a, a website with a a lot of information and old photographs and old stories and things like that. And it's real simple to remember. It's PercyPringle.com. And uh, I do my best to keep it uh, up to date. I got a great webmaster, just like you do. That he's very talented, does a lot of artwork and, th- and things like that. And I'm on uh, I'm on Twitter and, and all this all this fancy you know, 2011 stuff. You know, I I I I become a part of. And uh, I'm out there and, and, and I'm available. And uh, all you got to do is go to my website. You'll see. There's, a, there's an email address on there, and and I'm real proud. Just, just like I know you answer a lot of e- read and answer all your emails, and I'm proud that uh, if you send me an email, I'm going to answer. I'm going to read it, and I'm going to answer it. It might, might might not be the question, the answer that you want to hear, but I'm going to send you an answer. And uh, I shoot from the hip, just like you do, and and tell it like it is. And if you like it, you like it. If you don't, I'm sorry. It's just the way I feel. Yep, and the fans can also follow Percy on uh, Twitter.com slash WWEurniverse, that's U-R-N, um, and uh, you've got thousands and thousands of fans on there that absolutely love you. Percy, do you, yeah, you want to take, uh, take, take a phone call? I'll be, uh, hell yeah, I'm here for well, the, uh, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do, uh, I'm ready. Okay, uh, we have 815-603, you're on the air with Percy Pringle and the Hunky Tonk Man. Eight one five, you there? This happens every week, so <laughs> go to the chat room. Oh yeah, even. oh I, I understand. This ain't my first barbecue. Yeah, okay. at, at yeah. least in the chat room we know we have the questions. Yeah, for some reason some of the guys come through, and I think they, they, get, they get on the phone line, they stay on, and when it's time for them to pop up and talk, they're not ready to go, Percy. And you know, in our business, well, when, when that red light comes on, you better have your ass ready to go. I understand exactly. <laughs> Yeah, um, if uh, any of the fans do want to call in, you can call us on 805-727-7113. Um, one of the questions that I've had in the chat room uh, for Percy is, uh, what was inside the urn? Nothing. <laughs> what, a dis- what, what a disappointment, huh? What a disappointment. <laughs> I, I, I freak people out. I get, I, I get asked that question all the time. And, and I'm not going to say there never was anything in there. Because back in the early days, you know, we used to do a lot of ribbing and stuff, and there's been some different oh, objects in there that we probably don't want to, we don't even want to get into. But uh, <laughs> basically, nothing. It was always empty, and I can't I, even carry it now. When I when I uh, when I go to independent shows, I I have such a, tr- a trouble with the with with the airport with TSA, uh, you know, carrying this. You know, urn, this bronze urn, they just uh, go nuts. So I, I really don't even carry it anymore. And, and I still have the, the original urn, the very first urn that I had that I used for all those years at the, at the beginning. But I'm sorry, sorry to bust your bubble, but there's nothing in the urn. But I earned well, my living. <laughs> you know, Percy, uh, if that urn was left unattended in the locker room, there's no telling what might have been put in it. Oh, and there's been some things put in it, and I'm not, I'm not the angel. I'm not, I'm not, the, I'm not Saint Percy the Archangel for sure, because I played my ten, set of ribs in my day too. But those were the good old days, and it was fun. And it's not like that to, no more. Like we were talking earlier, how things have changed, you know. And yeah, and in yeah. fact, when, before I got off on that tangent, uh, I, we were, I was talking, I was starting to talk about my last six months run up, up there with Vince and, and WWE, and and. Uh, how different what did I do you get mad at me hung up on me jeez dad gummit Percy you know how this this high tech stuff is now <laughs> oh, I, I was telling the kids the other day when I did a seminar 
Okay, uh, now we've lost Honky Tonk Man. This is going crazy. We seem to be dropping off people. <laughs> oh, okay. man. Yeah, we seem to be having a bit of a connection problem with with the Blog Talk Radio tonight. Um, we have a question. It, it happens. It, it uh, happens. It's modern technology. Uh, we have a question from the uh, chat room, uh, Percy. Um, they're asking, uh, what led to you returning to the WWE? Well, it, it, to tell you the truth, I had no intentions whatever of going back to the WWE. I had pretty much, uh, t- at that point in, in my life, uh, that was right after my wife had passed away. And, are we, and I had are we back it. on? We're back. I think it's my dadgum cell phone it's, that's causing trouble, and I'm going to throw that SOB down the toilet here in a few minutes. Yeah, that's that's why I had him call me on my house phone, because I was afraid I, that might happen to, happen to me, too, on my cell phone. Well, I had well, this thing laying here, and somebody's been trying to call me when they try to call me on that Skype. Now, this Skype is a wonderful thing, but I guess it's cutting me off every time. And I don't know who's trying to call me, but by God, it better not be Vince McMahon. I'll be. <laughs> you know, he'll get well, well, well he was he he was just asking me a question out of the chat room about why did I did I make my recent return to WWE, and and, and I was starting to tell him is that. I had no plans at all to return to the business at that level. No plans at all. And right. when they called me, which was about, it was about a year ago this time that, that I received, just totally out of the blue, my phone rang, I answered it, and it was a conference call with uh, with, with Michael Hayes and, and Stephanie McMahon and a lot of some of the other creative on the team. And, and they said, Percy, that we have an idea, and before we go any further with it, we wanted to know: Do you have any interest in coming back to the company? And I swear, I didn't. I didn't even take a breath. I said, "Nope." But they took a breath. You could hear them go, "No," you know, like <laughs> there's not a lot of folks that tell them no. And 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 I had pretty much. And and you can understand, Wayne. I I just I, you know my wife had passed away, and I'd went through a lot of changes, and, and I had just put that up on the shelf, and and I had no. No desire to go back on the road like that, especially a full time schedule. So we kind of battered it around for at least a month. I mean, phone trading, phone calls, and emails a couple of times a week, and uh, so they finally came up with a, a a deal for me that kind of fit what I wanted to do because uh, I sure sure didn't want to go back full time. So I made a deal with them to just just to do television and and pay per views only. And, and I, I wasn't going to do any, you know, long tours, house shows, or anything like that, because it, a lot of the folks that watched the product at that time, they probably remember that Undertaker was going through a period where he had lost his power and, and everything, and uh, so they needed Paul Bear to come back with the urn and, and, and bring his power back. And so we did, and I had a blast. The, 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 the six months run that I had this past year. It was even even the part where Edge kidnapped me. A lot of people, you know, they uh, they talk about that and oh, was it? Well, didn't you feel like that was disrespectful? Hell no, I didn't feel like it was disrespectful. I had a blast. We were having so much fun, especially going to the bank every week. I I I, I had a blast. It was it was great. Well, so, uh, you know that's that's the one thing there. The, the Vince McMahon, his checks never bounce. No, and, and uh, like I said, he, he's always taken good care of me, and and and, and still does it. Like if I, I swear, if I needed something right now, I could pick up the phone and call him. He, he's already been there, been there for me. But then on the other hand, I'm not trying to blow smoke up, you know, anybody's butt. You know, I'd done my job too. I, I you know, I was always there when when they needed me, and, and I was always on time. And and, and I, I thank God I didn't have a lot of the personal demons that a lot of guys had, and and, uh, and I did hang on to those Undertaker's coattails as tight as I could for a lot of years, but uh, I knew my spot, and uh, I, I was very satisfied doing what I'd done. I, I loved the character Paul Bearer, and, and, and I was blessed to be able to, to do it well. The chemistry between me and the Undertaker was a natural. Uh, we never had to sit around and, and worry about what we were going to do, what we were going to say. It, 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 it was just a happening. It, it just happened, and uh, it was all good. And, and right before we, we got disconnected there, I, w- I was saying the differences, you know, between 20 years ago and today. 
uh, you know, 10 years ago when I was there, it was called Sports Entertainment. But uh, no offense to, to the company, to Vince or anybody there, it's certainly not sports entertainment anymore. Uh, it is strictly Hollywood, 100% Hollywood. It is not the professional wrestling that Honky Tonk and, and, and Bill Moody, Percy Pringle, Paul Bearer grew up on, you know, 30 years ago. And you understand completely. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, the kids nowadays, they're, they're, they're making so much more money than we ever did. And, and they have these long-term contracts. And, and they have uh, uh, medical uh, staff to take care of their injuries and things where, you know, we had to crawl to the ring sometimes. And, but... Uh, you know, I don't begrudge them at all. I'm glad for them, and I'm, I, you know, I, lo- I like what the product is doing because it's it's different, and the, the business has to evolve. And you know this, person. Yeah, my, you know, and, and that's the way I, I do agree 100 percent with you. And 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 uh, like me and you are have always pretty much been on the same page. I mean, it, it, it's 2011, and, there, and there's a lot of our, our 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 peers, you know, that that worked back in the days when we did and started when we did and. They just can't accept, you know, the, the changes. Look, my God, look, Wayne, we we got the GPS now. We got cell phones now. We got <laughs> Skype now. We got computers and shit. We were lucky. We, we you know we were lucky to find a Seven Eleven and pull up into town. And go, where's wrestling tonight? You know, and look for a poster to find. You know what I mean? Now we got yes, a GPS. It's going to take us right to the front door of the arena. And, and a cell phone. We were lucky to have a pager years ago, and then you had to find a, a telephone to call the person that was paging you on. I, I, it's, I, just, uh, it's a no, different world. I, I told the people at Cauliflower Alley, the board, the board of directors, I said, you need to change this thing from a baloney they have on Tuesday night. It's the baloney blowout banquet. I said, right. there's not. There's not a kid in this room that knows what that is. You have to. You guys have to change the name of it. And they have. A I mean, we could, they could call it Nintendo Night, and they, all the boys could go back to the hotel room and play Nintendo. <laughs> right. but, and, 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 and no offense to them, you know. God bless them. Oh. Uh, no offense to them at all. But I understand completely, and and I am a lifetime member of the Cauliflower Alley Club, and I and I've been numerous times, and I haven't been in the last couple of years, and, and but. I thought I was going to be able to make it this year, but but I didn't. But maybe next year will be the year. Yeah, and you know, I did get I to really see. I did. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't want you to step over you. I, I did ahead, get ahead. to see uh, some stuff on the internet when you were doing your uh, the honky tonk man stuff at the cauliflower alley. <laughs> I loved it, man. I was that, that. That's the Wayne. That's the Wayne that I know and love. And me and Wayne has set many a dressing rooms and and, and, <laughs> and, and, and arenas all around the country. Singing George Jones and Merle Haggard and Conway Twitty, and uh, we love our country music, don't we, Honky? Yes, yes, we do. And uh, you know uh, what is it? I'm not. I, you and I both are not ready for that rocking chair. <laughs> exactly. I know Geritol or Medicare. We might use That's a little Clairol, but but other than that, we we don't need the rest of it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And, and I, I, I always send these things to you back and forth. Uh, in a pawn shop in Chicago on a sunny... Oh, yes. <laughs> a couple yeah, of days. I, I, I thoroughly in, enjoy that. And a lot of the fans are listening right now, but don't even... And I apologize to you. You don't, you don't understand what we're talking about. But sometimes Wayne, is, Wayne will send me an email or something or, or a message, and he'll, he'll give me one line to a country song, and I'll come back to the second line. And before you know it, we'll go to 10 or 15 emails, and we've done written a country song. <laughs> yes, we do. And, and, and as, I, as I was leaving Las Vegas at 4 a.m. Uh, uh, Thursday morning, headed to Syracuse, Jerry Briscoe was still sitting at the bar, and I walked by and I said, "If you're big star bound, let me tell you, it's a long." And he went, "It's a long, hard ride." <laughs> I love, I I love Jerry Briscoe with my heart, and my soul. He 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 he's a brother to me. You know, he he's one of those guys that, and you know what I'm talking about. I just yeah. love him dearly. He's, I got to spend a lot of time with him uh, at WrestleMania this year, and his young son Wes, who you know he's going through developmental right now for WWE down in Florida. I got to spend some time with Jerry and his son, and uh, I, I just love him dearly, and, and I miss his brother Jack dearly. What a talent he was! Yes, yes, I do too. And uh, uh, both those guys, first class gentlemen. 
first Absolutely. class people. There's a lot. There's, anyway, there's more good. There's more good apples in, in in our basket than there is bad ones. Thank God. Well, I, I know that you have other plans and you've got things to do, and we got some some news here tonight that uh, is going to shock the world about the uh, TNA and everything going on down there. And I know you you probably don't watch that show. I don't either, I and mean, I, I could care less. But about I them, do, but but I do. I I do. I I seriously do. And I, I don't. I watch it as much. If it's, if it's wrestling's on TV, I'm watching. I, I've always you know, have, and I always will. And uh, you know, I might not approve of everything or, or like everything, and and but that's just me. I, I I'm a I'm a, prof- I'm a wrestling fan, and if it's on, I watch it, and I do watch it, and I'm not happy all the time. But I have some dear dear friends that work for that company, and I don't care. They're always going to be my friends. Let me ask let me ask you this, Percy, because and I'm gonna ask Jerry Jarrett next week. Uh you've been around the business like I have thirty something, thirty five years and what what and, and I mean if you if you could say one thing or two things that you might see that they have just not they're not catching on. Why why is that show just they don't catch on? I don't know, Wayne, and, and I, I think about that all the time. I worked for them early on when they first started. I guess it was about eight years ago. They were, you know, when they first started up in Nashville at the old fairgrounds. <clears throat> I, uh, I would ride up with Bob Armstrong and his boys. They'd rent a van, and me and Bob and the Armstrong boys would pile in a van and drive up to Nashville. <clears throat> I think Bob was working as like their commissioner or something back then when they first started. Yep. And 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 I worked for him for a few months from from the, from the very beginning, and now here we are, hindsight 2020. You know, looking over what they've done, <clears throat> and I'm not the one to to you know throw, throw bricks if you live in a glass house, but I I I can't put my finger on it. My God, they got some fantastic talent there. Uh, yeah. You know, guys that we've known for years and years, and we know they've got it. I, and, and I don't know what's happened to it. I really do. I, I, I just recently, I, I, I just recently heard that they released uh, Jade Lethal. I, I don't, I don't yeah. know if you're familiar with this kid. Uh, yeah. You, you, you probably ran into him to, on some of the independent shows that you've been Great on. Guy. I love him to death. I think he's been some of the most entertaining television that that, that TNA had uh, was when Jay was doing uh, the stuff with Ric Flair. I sat here in my living room and, and just me and my three dogs, and my dog was looking at me like I was nuts. But I'm sitting in my chair just loving wrestling again. You know, I, I, and I told Jay Lethal that. And, and I, he's a fantastic talent and a, a gentleman. Uh, he respects our business and knows the history of our industry. And uh, they got some good folks up there, notwithstanding the older guys such as Mick Foley and Jeff, and I can go on and on and on. But I can't put my finger on. Uh, they, they seem to have all the pieces of the puzzle, but they just can't put the puzzle together. I don't know why. I don't understand. I, I, I don't either. And, uh, uh, gosh, if you, if, you gave us, if you gave me and you $30, $40 million, I think we could make it work. In a pawn shop in Chicago. <laughs> on a sunny summer day, we could buy a little bit more expensive ring, couldn't we? Yes, we could. I really, <laughs> I really, I appreciate you so much coming on to, with us tonight and uh, sharing some of your insights and, uh, and the things that that you've gone through. And God bless you. You're my brother, and I love you. And uh, you know I do. And and uh, we're gonna get together again. We will, and and I feel the exact same way about you, and, and my best to your family, and you be safe out there on the roads, and uh, if you're ever going to holler at me, I'll, I'll be glad to do this any time, and uh, we'll do part two. Give me a holler. Okay, Percy, uh, we've actually lost HCM again uh, on the uh, okay. Skype. Okay. All right, man. Well, I'm, I guess I'll go ahead and go, and, and I appreciate you having me, and uh, if for any, you know, if, if you know how to find me, if you all ever want to do something again, just give me a shout. No problem. Cool. It's been an absolute honor to have you on, and, and you're welcome right. on the show. Take care, my friend, and, and, and keep in touch. If there's anything I can ever do for you, you know how to find me. 
Thank you so much. All right, Bert. man. You have a good night. Bye-bye.